So this is the last part of this lecture on um, the limited do domain approach in explaining human personality. So in this video, I'm going to um, uh, elaborate the uh, the concept that uh, are proposed by Martin Seligman. So he was once uh, uh, initiated the idea, coined the terms that he called learned helplessness. Uh, this is a condition that is very similar to, de de to depression, but this is something that uh, result uh, from the uh, from a from a learning process when we uh, believe that when we believe that we have no control over our environment. So when we believe that we don't have control uh, to change our be to change our environment to change our behavior, uh, this condition would uh, follow after uh, after that belief. So Seligman not only uh, explaining this idea on his research uh, and investigative uh, 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 decades of his uh, investigative works, he also expanded the idea of uh, of the belief that uh, that preceded that preceded uh, this condition, that is the optimism versus pessimism. So um, the idea that he be, he uh, proposed that. Uh, it's not the uh, the belief of not having a control itself that could affect our uh, health, our health condition, because uh, some research uh, provide evidence that learned helplessness could affect negatively to our health, our physical health, and our psychological health as well. So it's not only the belief of uh, of having no control over the environment. But also how we explain why we don't have control over it. So that's why optimism and pessimism would serve important explanation on this. So this is the table that uh, that give you the similarity of of the condition uh, between learned helplessness and depression. So it's pretty much similar. Um, and um, if we, uh, well, it's in psychology we call it. Uh, um, uh, hypomanic uh, condition, so which means that uh, this person, uh, one could have, could lose their energy to to do their activity. So we um, we often, uh, so we saw a lot of differences, uh, a lot of similarity with depression, and. This is the explanatory style that preceded the belief of lack of control. So, how we explain the condition, uh, the belief of lack of control, would also result uh, whether we could lead to uh, learn helplessness or not. So, if you have an optimistic explanatory style of of uh, of the ex uh, of the lack of control over your environment, it would prevent the helplessness. But if one adopt a more pessimistic explanatory style, it would spread helplessness even more. So this is also uh, confirms that uh, not only the belief of lack of control itself, but the preceded, the preceded uh, belief of explaining why we don't have proper control over our environment would also uh, have influential uh, influential outcome whether we would fall into uh, learn helplessness condition or not and some research uh, about optimism conducted by Seligman for many decades um, he confirmed that people who higher score who has higher score in optimism they get sick less often and they experience less stress and depression and they live longer uh, they recover faster when they have to experience uh, death from a family member. And interestingly, um, maybe this is something that is quite um, quite uh, sensitive to culture. And those people who has higher uh, score on optimism, they tend to live in individualistic culture rather than collectivistic culture. They earn better grades, more flexible. And they dribble a basketball batter. I'm not sure about this. I think it sounds ridiculous. Um, um, it's very interesting to look at those researches, especially the last one. And uh, uh, Martin Seligman uh, is not only famous on proposing uh, the idea of learned helplessness. 
he he is also famous on uh, on the study of happiness. So he is he is in fact the authority figure in this field. Yeah. So he uh, variously labeled happy personality as as a part of as a component as a combination of sorry a combination of subjective well-being and or sometimes we use life satisfaction so we believe uh, psychologists believe that a happy life comprises the rational uh, assessment of our quality of life and also uh, comprises the uh, emotional aspect so we believe that uh, if someone is happy uh, uh, about their life they would <coughs> rationally uh, satisfied with their life and they feel more positive moods uh, rather than the negative emotion and the concept of happiness so some some research uh, numerous research numerous research in behavioral economy and also in economics and also in psychology it leads to a result that um, uh, leads to answer to uh, many traditional questions such as whether uh, money can make you happy and the uh, and the answer is yes money can make you happy <laughs> so if you have more money and live in a wealthy country it makes you happier uh, and you will be more attractive and exercise more uh, when you get older uh, be married and without children which is quite interesting and have a strong sense of ethnic identity be extraverted conscientious and higher self-efficacy and locus of control and not to be neurotic that is pretty much makes sense be enthusiastic optimistic and grateful a health goal a healthy lifestyle and high degree of social involvement have a proper balance between personal life and work spend time on internet uh, or maybe not <laughs> And I would like to give you um, additional uh, information on the first uh, statement about the connection between money and happiness. It's true that having more money makes you happy, but the, uh, the relationship between money and happiness is not linear. So it's not that having, much, uh, having more money will make you happy, but at some point uh, of uh, of possession of money possession adding more money adding more wealth it doesn't give you uh, much effect on your on happiness so it's true that uh, rather than being poor being uh, well paid would make you happy but when you are extremely rich for example adding more wealth to your uh, to your well uh, to your uh, current wealth it would it would give you no effect on your happiness so the so the conclusion is that the correlation between money and happiness is not linear which means ad adding more wealth it doesn't always uh, come as uh, it doesn't always result on ad on on having more happiness and this is also the a questions that uh, that most people will ask so which actually comes first um, happiness or success so if someone is happy does that mean that they already success or the other way around if you are happy then the success will come follow after uh, after being happy so which comes first so research, uh, research actually shows that uh, happiness or subjective well-being should come first then it will lead to success because uh, happiness and uh, well-being would lead to behavior that bring about success for example people when someone has when someone has higher score in subjective well-being they would be more likely to secure a job interview and they, they tend to be evaluated more positively by their uh, superior and when they when they already have a job and they tend to show better performance and productivity which means which means that uh, happiness and subjective well-being should come before the success uh, that would be the end of this lecture thank you very much for taking your taking your time um, watching this video I, I hope that you find uh, this lecture helpful and uh, again I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day thank you very much